Welcome back, everybody. This is Latin Spike Picks. Today we will be doing the fight card for UFC 305, Duplessis versus Adesanya. In uh, is it in Brisbane or is it in Perth? Um, I can't remember, but somewhere in Australia. So it's going to be a Aussie heavy card. Uh, Apologies for all the people that were expecting some videos over the summer. Summer has just been a little too busy. I uh, promised some people that I was going to do this main fight card. And I'm pretty sure that I will definitely be doing all the main fight cards from now on. Uh, I'll try to do other fight nights as well. And we'll see how that turns out. But I will try my best to do and keep up with every single main uh, main event once a month on the fight card predictions and I will try add in other fight nights as well depending on my schedule unfortunately just a little too busy summertime has been really crazy maybe things will just get a little uh, slower as we lead out of summertime and less things to do but nevertheless, here we are, and I will do the fight picks as usual from the opening uh, fight to the main event. So let's start. First fight, Stuart Nickel versus Je Jesus Aguilar. Jesus, always bet on Jesus. Uh, Stuart Nicole, five foot five, no reach. The guy's new. Eight wins, zero losses, zero draws, 29 years old. Jesus Aguilar, five foot four, 62 inch reach, 10 wins, two losses, eight, 28 years old. Um, you know what? They're really trying to highlight this Stuart Nickel. He's new. He's the next big thing uh, in uh, Australia. He's a uh, blue uh, black belt in jiu-jitsu, heavy on jiu-jitsu. You know, Jesus Aguilar, I've made a lot of money betting on this guy. You know, he's really small. He says he's five foot four. He might be five foot two, five foot three. He's got the shortest arm, 62 inch reach. But I really like the guy. He's got a lot of heart. He's got uh, tons of gas and energy for, you know, days. Guy fights hard for your money. You know, he's he throws big bombs, big power punches. He's hard to take down, fights out of positions, doesn't give up. Uh, got a great guillotine choke. You know, I, I like betting on this guy, so I'm going to give you a heads up on that. So, Stuart Nickel, you know, looking into this guy, he seems like he'd be a good matchup for Jesus. You know, he's a good ground guy. He wins a lot of fights by KO, but it's more or less him holding everyone on the ground and pound, ground and pounding them. So, it's not like a KO power. Um, so, he's a ground guy as well. So, it's going to be a very tough fight on the ground. Um, looking at Stuart Nickel's record i mean he he could be the next big thing but the last few guys he fought if you look into their records their guys the couple of guys that have good records are also guys that he fought after a long layoff uh, the last three guys he fought one of them um one of those guys came after a two-year layoff to fight nicole the other guy came after a seven-year layoff to fight nicole and uh both those guys did okay against them especially one of the guys with the uh, two-year layoff. It took him five rounds. Um, Stuart Nichols still won. He's undefeated. So, um, I mean, he's an Aussie. He's going to be the favorite. So if it's a close fight, you know, you think the judges are going to sway towards him. But, I mean, he's not proven. Jesus has fought the upper level guys. He's fought one of the best guys in the division. He fought what that, um, what's that uh, Japanese guy? And he, and, he, and he made a good account of himself, you know, honestly, when I remember that fight, you know, he put him in some bad spots, you know, and he ended up getting, I mean, it was a last minute thing. He fought Taira. I mean, that was his uh, first fight in the UFC, you know, and the next fight he wins uh, by TKO, another, he beat an Aussie guy. And then he, uh, Mendonca by split decision, who's not a bad fighter. And uh, we've got an unproven guy in Nickel. So, you know, the pick's going to be the underdog. Jesus is a decent sized underdog. Uh, he is my least confident pick, but um, we just don't know very much about Nickel. So that's why it's my least confident pick. If I knew a little bit more about Nickel, I'd be more confident either way. But, you know, giving this is like an unknown and it's a 50, fight, 50 type of fight. And Jesus Segu is a plus 190 underdog. I mean, I'm gonna go with this guy. 
Nicole, who we don't even know this guy yet, and until he's fought somebody at UFC level, which he hasn't fought anywhere near that yet, you know, you can change my mind. But for now, Aguilar is going to be the pick. Uh, next fight, Song Kanan versus Ricky Glenn. Song Kanan, six feet tall. Oh, and by the way, Stuart Nickel says he's five foot five. Guarantee he's not five foot five. He's probably five foot four or five foot three. You know, compared to the other guys he fought that were five foot five, he looks a lot shorter. So it's kind of an exaggeration, I think. He's still probably one inch taller than Aguilar. So, but Song, next fight, Song Kanan versus Ricky Glenn. Song Kanan. Six feet tall, 71 and a half inch reach, 21 wins, eight losses, 34 years old. Ricky Glenn, six feet tall, 70 and a half inch reach, 22 wins, eight losses, two, uh, two draws, 35 years old. Both of them are getting up there in age. Ricky Glenn, he's moving up from light to welterweight, so he's had a disadvantage, but he's really tall. He's he's tough, he's durable, although he's been getting knocked out lately, but it's been getting out by not guys who knock people out. But he's really good on the ground, but if you look at his record, he doesn't take a lot of people to the ground. He's really good on the ground, but he doesn't seem like he wants to go to the ground. He wants to fight on the feet, which is where Song Kanan likes to keep the fights, on the feet. He does have KO power. He doesn't have a lot of volume, but he's fighting Ricky Glenn, who doesn't have a lot of volume. Uh, Song Kanan, I think, is going to win these moments. I don't think it's going to be a KO victory. I think Song Kanan is going to win some moments, uh, outstrike Ricky Glenn, keep it on the feet, and uh, just win a win a decision, and uh, you'll you'll notice that there the the guys that I'm seeing that you know the UFC wants to highlight there are they're either Aussie or they're Chinese because it's in that end of the world. So Song kanan has got a huge following. I could see him winning this fight. He's 34 years old, still not over the hill. I think Ricky Glenn looks a lot worse uh, for his age, going up in weight. It's going to be a really tough fight for him. I think Kanan. They're going to set this up for Kinan to win. You know, it's that into the world. He's going to have a lot of fans. Song Kinan's going to be the pick. Uh, pretty high degree of confidence on that one. Even though Ricky Glenn can be dangerous, kinan has got way too much experience to make any dumb moves, right? Um, moving on. Uh, Tom Nolan versus Alex Reyes. Tom Nolan, 6'3", 73 inch reach, 7 wins, 1 loss, 24 years old. Alex Reyes, 5'11", 73 inch reach, same reach. 13 wins, 4 losses, 37 years old. I mean, the odds are, are crazy. It's minus 1,300 for Nolan, plus 700 for Reyes. Nolan is Aussie guy. They found the one guy, the lowest level guy, to come and fight Nolan because they know Nolan. It was a big hype train before, before he got derailed a little bit. Reyes, 37 years old. He's getting KO'd. Uh, Nolan... I mean, at minus 1,300, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't bet on Nolan at minus 400. <laughs> Never mind minus 1,300. Nolan has got a lot of physical attributes. He's good on the ground. He's fairly durable, but he can get knocked out. He's got a great straight straw, straight punches, I think straight right, um, that comes down the pipe. Really long, really tall for the division. But this guy has lost twice. He got knocked out once and he got knocked down and almost knocked out a second time by lower level guys. Reyes is the lowest level guy. Plus 700. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Nolan should win this fight. But you're picking Reyes who, who does have some KO power against a guy who gets KO'd by lower level opponents and he's minus 1300. I mean, I'm going to pick Nolan to win this, but... Talk about danger, you know, for Nolan. I mean, there's 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 the way he's going to lose, and it's through KO by Reyes. But Nolan's going to be the pick. It's just kind of going to be an interesting fight. I'm rooting for Reyes. <laughs> Knock this guy out. Minus 1,300. It's crazy. So the bet will be Reyes by KO. <laughs> I don't know what that would be, but... Um, nevertheless, suggestion, uh, don't bet on anyone. Just stay away from that fight. Um, next, uh, the prelims. Uh, moving on. Junior Tafa versus Walter Wacker. Um, what a big letdown that guy was. I bet on him last time. It was terrible. Uh, Junior Tafa, 6'3", 72 inch reach, 5 foot Five wins, two losses, zero draws, 27 years old. Walter Wacker, 6'6", 78 inch reach, 11 wins, one loss, 26 years old. 
Um, Walter Walker fought Brzezinski last time, and what a disappointment. It was a close split decision, I think it was, and it was the first round was going to go either way, but Walter Walker just got more tired and more tired, and Brzezinski just outworked him. But nevertheless, Brzezinski got taken down a lot, and he does. But he's the kind of guy that keeps fighting to get back up. If you ever notice, Brzezinski gets taken down a lot. That's because he keeps getting back up. So he has this attribute that he's very uh, physical. He's not overweight. He's not a super big heavyweight. And he's, he's agile. So he gets back up. So he kept getting back up and fighting up. And he basically tired out Walter Walker and outworked him in the first round. And the fact is, Walter Walker was gonna, is going to take anybody down six foot six he's a huge guy junior tafa he's got good takedown defense he's been getting better he's very dangerous on the feet very dangerous striker and uh he fought uzman and i bet on him against uzman i thought he almost pulled it off but uzman kept getting him back down and the thing is with junior tafa he's got great takedown defense and the fight after that you saw him having good takedown defense but his get up game is where i'm not liking what I see is how does he get back up and with a bigger body like Walter Walker on top if you don't have a really busy bottom game like Brzezinski was having where he could steal those rounds you're going to get Walter Walker stealing these rounds by just lying on top of you so I don't I mean I was going back and forth I wanted to take a dog shot on Taffa because um, it was a it was a pick him at one point. I thought you know he could pick it up, pick uh, you know, you know, pick this fight off and you know kind of win just through striking better. But you know what? When Walter Walker is going to get this guy down, and I think I mean with a body like that, he's going to get you down. Um, if Junior Tafa can stay up on his feet and fight him off on the fence, he could win this. But if he gets on the ground, he's going to have a hard time getting up. He's not going to be as good as. Brzezinski to get up even though he's got good takedown defense it's to get back up defense and now Walter Walker is an underdog and uh, I'm gonna have to go with Walter Walker I bet on him last time he kind of lost I think Junior Toff was a more I don't think he's a super high volume guy I think Brzezinski's more volume and like I said get back up kind of guy Junior Toff uh, stuff to takedowns type of guy and I think a guy like Walter Walker will take you down. So he will go on to the ground. And it's just a matter of what kind of dirty decision this is going to be. Um, I don't think Junior Taffa is going to knock out Walter Walker. I think Walter Walker has a little bit of skills on the feet. Not great. I mean, not like Taffa's level. But he's going to be closing the distance. So I'm going to pick Walter Walker, you know, mid to low level confidence. And he's going to beat Junior Taffa who is the Aussie fighter, uh, so we got to be careful with that. But I think Walter Walker kind of learned his lesson last time. I think he's going to get better as things go on. He does have a relatively high ceiling, as well as Junior Taffa, but I think Taffa is always going to be susceptible to the, to the, the ground game, kind of like his brother. Um, so yeah, so Walter Walker is going to be the pick. Uh, next fight, Josh Kulibao versus Ricardo Ramos. Josh Kulibao. 5'10", 73 inch reach, 7 wins, 3 losses, 1 draw, 30 years old. Ricardo Ramos, 5'9", 72 inch reach, 16 wins, 6 losses, 29 years old. Uh, Just Kulibao is the favorite. Ricardo Ramos is the underdog. I bet on Ramos in the last couple fights, and both fights, same thing happened. He got guillotine choked. So he does lose by guillotine choke, but he does take people to the ground. Josh Kulibao's got a really good takedown defense. He can get taken to the ground, but he's got a good get-up game. He's got a great gas tank. Ricardo Ramos does get tired as the fight goes on. Josh Kulibao is going to be the better, cleaner striker. Ricardo Ramos has got these great flamboyant type of strikes, um, some pretty good kicks. But Kulibao is a real dog, you know. And, uh, yeah, you know, I, I really like his fighting style. He just doesn't give up, keeps going forward, and he won't quit. And Ricardo Ramos does slow down as things go on. The only danger is uh, Ricardo Ramos taking Kulibao down and can Kulibao get back up really quick so he doesn't lose those rounds and get it stolen from him. And I think he can. So I'm going to go with the Aussie on this one. I think Kulibao is going to be able to do it. Ricardo Ramos, you know, as talented as he is, he just seems to be a big letdown. Big letdown after big letdown after big letdown. 
And I think he's going to get tired. I think Koulibaly's going to wear on him. I think is going to be the cleaner striker. He's going to outpoint him. And if he doesn't get taken down that often and can get back up pretty quick, if he does get taken down, he should win this decision. I can't, I almost generally loses by submission. So I can't see Koulibaly submitting him. Uh, Ramos is too good for that. And Kuba is just going to have to stay away and uh, win this decision. Um, moving on, Casey O'Neill versus Luana Santos. Casey O'Neill, 5'6", 69-inch reach, 9 wins, 2 losses, 26 years old. Luana Santos, 5'6", 67-inch reach, 8 wins, 1 loss, 24 years old. You know, both these girls, I've always thought were overrated. I thought Casey O'Neill was overrated. And... Uh, and I think Luana Santos was overrated, but they do win quite a few fights. Casey O'Neill is tough, she's durable, she's kind of on the slow side. You know, she'll take one to give one. She is a good wrestler, she can take people down, but strong girls can stay up on their feet and fight with her. And I think Lipsky proved that last time by beating the crap out of O'Neill. Luana Santos, I don't think is Luana Sant uh, is Lipsky. She is strong. She's Okay, striker, not nearly the caliber of Lipsky. She's good on the ground. She's a good judo player. She's not doesn't have good takedowns, but she's got good judo throws. I think in the clinch she'll be dangerous to to uh, to throw O'Neill. I think Lipsky did that to O'Neill as well. Uh, I don't know how she can fight off. Um, I haven't seen her against a really good wrestler. O'Neill is a pretty good wrestler. I don't know if she's a really good wrestler. You know, this is one of those fights that is quite 50-50. O'Neill's going to be the Aussie. Um, you know, if you, if you want to know, I think it's a split decision type of fight. I mean, I wouldn't want to lean Luana Santos, but you know, if I had to take a dog shot, you know, with the odds, I mean, O'Neill definitely could win this. It's going to be a split decision type of fight. Leaning on Luana Santos, very low confidence. Uh, moving on, Jack Jenkins versus Herbert Burns. Another one of these fights. Uh, Jack Jenkins, five foot seven, sixty-eight inch reach, twelve wins, three losses, thirty years old. Herbert Burns, five foot nine, seventy-three and a half inch reach, eleven wins, five losses, thirty-six years old. The metrics. Herbert Burns has got pretty good metrics. He's got really long arms. He's gonna be tall. He's getting old though. He's never been that good, but he's explosive and he's dangerous. He's dangerous striking. He's dangerous with submissions, and he's just one of those guys that you never know how he's how how he's gonna come out. Well, he's gonna come out like gangbusters. And if he catches you, you're in trouble. And then if he puts you in a bad position, he can submit you. He can KO you, club and sub. The guy's dangerous, but the guy is not that good. He's got a bad gas tank, uh, can get beat up and quit. You know, you don't really want to put your money on him. He's usually a pretty big underdog, but he's always dangerous. And he's actually been losing to a lot of guys that are pretty good. And, uh, but you know, Jack Jenkins is a minus 800 favorite. I mean, that's, again, it's like one of that Nolan thing. It's, are you serious? Like, Herbert Burns is plus 475 against Jack Jenkins. And, you know, you're going in uh, looking at their, where is this guy here, Jenkins? I mean, Herbert Burns, look at this. He fought Arce. He fought Algio. He fought Pineda. So he's fought, I mean, Jenkins is a lower level guy. He's not mid, he's actually low level. So he was, he got KO'd by all these other guys, but these guys are upper level guys. And Jenkins is tough. He is the Aussie. I think they brought in Herbert Burns because they think he's going to beat him and he should beat him. I mean, he's a huge favorite, but realistically, this is a dangerous fight. Don't bet on it. Minus 800. Don't even go near it. Herbert Burns has a chance to, you know, suck out on this one and either, I'm thinking, if he's going to win, it's going to be club and sub. It's going to hit him really hard, get on the neck, and choke him out. But Jack Jenkins should be able to grind this guy out and grind him down. He does typically fight like that. He's got great low kicks. So he should win. High level confidence, but what a dangerous fight and what terrible odds. I'd stay away. Moving on to the main card. How are we doing for time? Good time. Um, main card, uh, Li Jing Liang versus Carlos Pratis. Li Jing Liang, six feet tall, 71 and a half inch reach, uh, 19 wins, eight losses, 36 years old. Carlos Pratis, six foot one, 78 inch reach, 19 wins, six losses, 30 years old. 
Li Jing Liang, this guy's tough. He's never been knocked out. He's getting 36 years old, he's getting older. I, he hasn't really shown that many signs of slowing down. He doesn't have a lot of volume, but he does have a lot of power and he can take a lot of punches. And he's pretty good with low kicks, you know, pretty good striker. He's okay on the ground. Um, good submit. He's been submitted once, but he's got pretty good submission defense. He, uh, he could take people down as well, but he's going to keep it on the feet. He wants to get in there. He wants to roll it out. He's really tough. Um, I like the way he fights. He's going to be fighting Carlos Pratas. He's a tough guy to fight. He's six foot one, but he's got a huge reach, 78 inch reach. He's got, he's got the reach on everybody and he, uh, you know, throws it from distance. He's hard to, he's hard to reach. He's got fast kicks, but he, he is susceptible to a low kick. Li Jialang does have a good low kick. He's 30 years old. So he's not old. He's new to the, to the UFC. And, um, you know, I remember betting against him when he fought, um, what's his name? Oh, um, what do you fight again? Giles. And, uh, you know, he beat Radke and Radke did start off pretty good, but then he got hurt a few times. And, you know, I don't think that great of Radke. I think Jing Liang is a better fighter than Radke. So Jing Liang can get hurt, but he's also got a solid chin. So he might be able to survive a couple of those straight punches. Um, Giles, who was straight up beating for two, beating uh, practice on the cards for two rounds. He was winning the fight and then he got caught with a straight left. And he got KO'd. We know Giles is chinny and Pratis has got a really good straight left. Um, so a good enough striker with good enough movement, good enough boxing can beat Pratis to a decision. Um, Jing, I don't know if Jing, Li Jing Liang is at that level, but Pratis is beatable. But, you know, if Jing Liang does have the moments, this is going to go come down to a close decision and he's at plus 290. So I think that they're both low level strikers as lo not low level strikers, but low volume strikers. So they're going to, it's going to be a close fight. Um, Jing Lian's got some power. Pratis has got definitely picks his shots, got some pretty good power, pretty good kicks. I think he's going to end up edging this one out. Um, you know, it's one of those things that you get dog shot territory with Li Jing Liang. He is the Chinese fighter, so he's fighting in that end of the world. I don't know, you know, I mean, a lot of times they'll pick somebody he can beat. This is going to be a really tough call, tough ask. Carlos Pratt should win this. You know, he's on the rise. Jing Liang is not. But don't count this guy out. This guy's tough. And, uh, you know, if he lands a couple of good punches on Pratt, you're going to see him steal rounds. It's going to be a close fight. Pratt is going to be the pick. But low level confidence, even though he is a pretty big underdog. Jing Liang is the underdog. Sorry. Uh, moving on. Uh, tai Tuivasa versus Yerzino Rosenstruck. Tai Tuivasa, 6'2, 75 inch reach, 15 wins, 7 losses, 31 years old. Yerzino Rosenstruck, 6'2, 78 inch reach, 14 wins, 5 losses, 36 years old. Rosen Stroop is 36 years old. He's at that magic number where things start to fade. Heavyweights generally fade a little uh, later. Rosen has got a great jab. He's a good kickboxer. Very educated jab. Very good striker. Stands straight up. Um, he's got pretty good kicks. Uh, he, you know, I like betting on Rosen I bet on him last time. And he, and he won the fight. He was the underdog. In this one, he is a heavy favorite. And uh, the fact is that I think that Tai Tuivasa is going to be faster. He's going to be shorter. He's not going to have the reach advantage. But Tai Tuivasa is going to be the guy who could take a better shot. And he's going to be faster. Now, Rosenstruck is going to have to keep him away from the jab. With the jab, I think that he can use the jab. He's very smart with it. This is going to be a close fight. It's Rosenstruck is going to be using the jab, maybe a quick one-two, and he's going to stay away. And Tai, tai Tuivas is going to try to close the distance, maybe some leg kicks, and try land. Close fight. I just have this feeling that Tai Tuivas is going to be able to pull this off. I don't know if it's going to be a KO or just a good three-round fight. I've seen Rosenstruck slow down, you know, as the fight goes on. I don't, I'm not saying he's going to gas, but it is only a three-round fight. He shouldn't be too bad. But the third round, he definitely is going to be gassed. 
a little more than Tui Vasa. I think Tui Vasa has got the better gas tank. He's gonna, I think he's gonna be a little more durable. He's a little younger. He is the underdog. He is the Aussie. Gonna have the crowd on his side. Um, this is gonna be a close fight. It's gonna be Rosenstruck's jab against uh, Tai Tui Vasa's, uh, you know, right one, two, and right hand. And Tai Tui Vasa could win this just because of the harder punches being thrown. I think I'm going to go with the underdog on this one. I think Tai Tuivasa can pull this off. I, I, I didn't like, I, I bet on Rosenstruck last time, but I didn't really like what I saw from Rosenstruck last time. He seemed very tentative and hesitant. And granted, the other guy was a wrestler and he was always trying to take him down. But it was more than that. He just seemed very rigid. Um, he seemed old, to be honest with you. And uh, that's why I'm going to go with Tai Tuivasa on this one. Uh, moving on, uh, Mateus Gamrot versus Dan Hooker. Uh, Mateus Gamrot, 5 foot 10, 70 and a half inch reach, 24 wins, 2 losses, 33 years old. Dan Hooker, 6 feet tall, 75 inch reach, 23 wins, 12 losses, 34 years old. Both of them are, you know, up in their prime. Dan Hooker seems to have a little bit of a resurgence as of late. You know, he, he was getting KO'd. He seemed like he really got derailed from contending. Mateus Gamrot, you know, he's... I mean, he's always getting hurt, never quite KO'd in his fights. So he is going to be susceptible to, to getting a, a, some straight punches down the pipe or a big knee. But, I mean, he's going to shoot, you know, 20 takedowns. <laughs> so that's how he fights. He's, he's fairly durable and he, and he recovers quickly. I like the way he fights, but Dan Hooker, you know, if it wasn't for the last fight that I saw with Dan, where I saw him do really well against Turner, and I was so surprised at how well against he did, I didn't expect him to do that well against Turner. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, after Makachev and Allen destroyed him, you know, uh, you know, it didn't look good, but against Turner, you know, split decision with victory, I was, I was really surprised. Um, and I think... Turner and Gamrot fought almost, it was fought to a split decision, right? So, I can't remember who won. But, uh, but yeah, he, he, uh, Gamrot fought to a split decision against Turner. And uh, I think Gamrot won, and I think a lot of people thought that Turner should have won that. And I was surprised at how well, I, I'd want to go with, um, yeah, split decision, Turner won, actually. Um, you know, this is a tough fight, and Gamrot's such a big favorite. But if Hooker does not catch Gamrot, Gamrot's going to be able to take this guy down. And I think the, the submission game for Turner was a lot better than it is for Hooker. Uh, Hooker is the Aussie. Got to be careful with this one. He's a huge favorite, but I'm fairly high confident that Gamrot should win this. You know, I think the little bit of resurgence you see from Hooker, it's just that. It's a little bit of a resurgence. I think Gamrot's going to win this just through sheer takedowns. Um, moving on. Kai Kara France versus Steve Ursig. Uh, Kara France, 5'4", 69 inch reach, 24 wins, 11, draw, 11, 11 losses, 0 draws, 31 years old. Steve Ursig, 5'8", 68 inch reach, 12 wins, 2 draws, 29 years old. Kara France, very dangerous fighter, very dangerous striker. It's a pretty good takedown defense. And when he fought the assassin baby, you know, I had I had money on him. And, uh, you know, it was a big letdown when he got, you know, knocked out with that body shot. But up to that point, it was really close. And the assassin baby was the champ. But, uh, you know, after seeing what Steve Ersick did against the champ, I was very impressed. It's going to be hard to bet against Steve Ersick. You know, Kara France does have a, ch a good chance. He fought Albazi to split decision. Moreno K TKO'd him. That would have that would have been a really close fight if it had, if it gone the distance. I gotta go with Steve Ursig on this one. I was just he's got a lot of momentum right now. You know, and uh, what he did against the champ was unbelievable. And he's definitely the best guy in this division. And he fought him to a really close fight. So. Steve Irsay, you know, tough guy, can take a punch, can give a punch, is good on the ground. You know, the guy's very well-rounded. Kai DeFrance, you know, he's, 
he can, he's durable. I mean, he got KO'd to the body, but otherwise he's durable. He's really quick. He's really fast. Lands punches. I think Kersik can handle that power. Carafans is pretty good. Takedown defense. Um, Ursig really good with takedowns. Both of them got great gas tanks. It's going to be a great fight, but I got to lean Ursig on this one. Um, high degree of confidence just because I think he's got really good momentum. Uh, moving on to the main event. Jaikas Duplessis versus Israel Adesanya. Jaikas Duplessis, 6 foot 1, 76 inch reach, 21 wins, 2 losses, 30 years old. Israel Adesanya, 6 foot 4, 80 inch reach, 24 wins, 3 draws, 35 years old. Israel is 35 years old. He didn't look good in his last fight. I'm, I end up costing me a lot of money because I had a 12 fight parlay busted by Israel Adesanya against, uh, what's his name? Um, Strickland. Yeah. 12 fight parlay busted by Israel Adesanya. You can go back on the video. It looked the board. 12 fight parlay busted by Israel Adesanya. I didn't, I could have cashed out. I didn't, there's no way Adesanya's losing to this guy. I actually thought Adesanya was going to fight Duplessis back then. And if I had a choice to pick who was going to win, I would have picked Duplessis back then. I'm still picking Duplessis now. I'm surprised Duplessis is the underdog in this one. I can't see, after I saw how Israel broke against Strickland and then watched Duplessis barely beat Strickland, it's a great fight. Bet on Duplessis again. I just th think it's Duplessis time. Adesanya is the favorite. I don't know why. I know he's going to have the reach advantage. Duplessis is going to be way stronger. He's going to be able to get to uh, Adesanya. And I don't know. He just has a way of taking people to the ground. And he's an awkward striker, but he's effective. And Adesanya, if he can't keep you at range, he's in trouble. And I just didn't like what I saw. And I mean, granted, he lost me a lot of money. I'm angry, but... <laughs> But it, like I said, even at that point, because he was supposed to fight Duplessis and it didn't work out because Duplessis was injured and Strickland st uh, steps in and beats Adesanya. And we didn't really appreciate how good Strickland was. He stepped up. And I think Duplessis is that guy. He's that guy that's going to beat Adesanya. I think he would have beat him a year ago. I think he's going to beat him now. So, you know, I would have picked him then. I'm still going to pick him now. Granted, Adesanya is coming back. And everyone has high hopes for this guy. But I think his best days are done. He just doesn't look like he's got the killer instinct. I think these new guys are, are just here to stay. Duplessis is going to win this, I think. Mid-level confidence. Let's go to the board. We got there. Board. How's it look? You can see it, right? It's a little glaring. All right, so. I don't know if this is going to help if I turn it. All right. I don't even know where to put these guys. So I put them up on top as most confident. Basically, no bet, no bet. If you are going to bet, I mean... <laughs> I mean, they're not worth it. You want to throw a sprinkle on Reyes and with for a KO or burns from a sub? I mean, that'd be kind of interesting. Especially if you have a three leg parlay and you threw that in there with a little bit of money and watch that thing multiply. But it is a huge chance, huge risk. Uh, I put them as high level confidence. Don't know where to put a minus 13 and minus 800. Basically, it's don't bet on this. What a waste of time. Uh, if you want to sprinkle in the dogs, I mean, just for shits and giggles kind of thing. And uh, just make it more interesting to watch and go ahead. But otherwise, don't bet on these guys. Uh, Ursay, high degree of confidence. Pretty high degree. I think he's going to win. I just think it's his time. I think he almost beat the champ. I think it's his time now. Gamron, minus 350. I don't like the odds. It's ridiculous. I think it's going to be a closer fight than a minus 350. But I do think he's going to win. Um, he's going to beat the odds. He's going to beat at home. I, I think that uh, you saw Hooker do well last time. I just don't think he's going to do as well this time. It's it, I think he's that's at the point where he is in his career. He's going to have some good fights and some bad fights. Cameron's going to be the pick. Keenan, I can't see Keenan losing against the guy moving up who looks like he's at the tail end of his career. 
You know, it's a Chinese fighter. I think they want at least one of these Chinese fighters to win in that end of the world. Kinans could be the guy. Duplessis, I thought he was going to win last year if we fought him. I still think he's going to win. I think he's the guy right now. I think Adesanya is going to come back. I don't think he's going to win. Duplessis is going to be the pick. Kulibao, I think he's too tough, too durable, works too hard, great gas tank. I think he's going to grind this one out in front of his home crowd. Uh, to Ivasa, you know, he's my first underdog play. I don't know. I just see him faster, younger, hungrier. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think he's going to win this. I don't know if he's going to win by KO. He's definitely going to win by decision, of course. He might win by KO, but I don't know if he's going to KO Rosenstruck. There's a chance, but I'm just thinking that he's going to outland them and land the better shots and end up winning a decision. Um, Walker... Big body is going to take Junior uh, Tafa down. He's going to just grind on him and lie on top of him and win a close fight. I think he's going to make up the, what he lost to Brzezinski. Um, yeah, I think everybody who was a huge favorite against Brzezinski and after they saw that performance, they're allotting the fact that he's going to do that against Junior. I think Junior is just a different style of fighter. <coughs> Once Junior comes down on the ground, he's going to have a hard time getting back up from this guy. Uh, next fight, Pratis. Pratis is a huge favorite. He should win. He's up and coming. Jing Liang is tough, durable. He's 36 years old. I mean, again, I got here a dog shot. At plus 290, Jing Liang could be worth it because Pratis is good, but Jing Liang's tough. And they're both low volume, low output fighters. You don't know how this is going to turn out. It's going to be close. Going to pick Pratis. Good dog shot for Jing Jing Lang with the odds. Uh, very low confidence on, on Santos. O'Neill could be a good dog shot as well. Gonna pick Santos. It's gonna be a real close fight. O'Neill's gonna be in front of her home crowd. We'll see how Santos responds to the, you know, wrestling type of takedowns. But she is good on the ground. She's really good with throws. Um, O'Neill's gonna be susceptible to that. Striking wise, they're gonna be very close. She's not that good. She's not that good. So, uh, moving on. Least confidence. Going to go with my dog shot. Going to go with the devil I know. I shouldn't say devil. Going to go with Jesus. The Jesus I know. Aguilar, I think he's tough. He's durable. He's entertaining. So, uh, one of my favorite fighters to watch. You know it's going to be good. Uh, Nicole, we don't know anything about this guy. He's good on the ground. It's going to be a big ground battle. Don't know anything about him. Going to go with the dog shot. Straight up dog shot in Aguilar. I mean, you could pick Nicole. Again, but my straight up dog shot will be Aguilar just because of the, all the unknowns with Nicole. And once again, guys, this is not financial advice. This is betting. Bet only what you are willing to lose. And take this information that I'm giving you and do your own research and uh, see if anything matches up. And maybe you want to make these bets and maybe you want to make certain parlays and you can take these ideas and combine them with yours and see uh, if you can uh, make a winning hand, so to speak. So yeah, otherwise, uh, be careful out there. <laughs> this is going to be a very interesting card. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, so I should have done it real quick, but you know, if I if I had to pick method of victory, Duplessis by decision, Erslig by decision, Gamera by decision, Tuivasa, I mean KO or decision, I'll, I'll lean decision, uh, Carlos Pratis, decision, or or Jing Liang if you want to take us out, I think it's gonna be a decision. Um, Nolan Reyes, if I had to make <laughs> I mean, if it's going to be no, again, don't bet on this fight. No one's going to either knock him out or he's going to knock him out. It's going to be KO. Uh, Song Kinan, you know, I could see this guy winning a decision. Uh, Ricky Glenn's tough. Song Kinan's got KO power, but he's not a killer. Um, Aguilar. Decision or guillotine choke? I guess you pick. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, Walker. Decision. Yeah. 
Koulibao decision is going to beat up on Rick Ricardo Ramos uh, and get back up and get beat him up and get back up and get beat him up. Uh, Luano Santos, if this, I mean, this fight's going to go to a decision. So you can pick pick your poison on that one, but leaning toward Luana Santos. Uh, Jack Jenkins, I mean, Herbert Burns is going to either lose. I think Jack Jenkins is either going to KO this guy or Herbert Burns is going to club and sell him. So again, stay away from that fight, but that's just my feeling on it. All right. Thank you very much for joining me again today. Um, not sure if I'm going to be getting out a video out for the next fights, but I will be getting a video out for the next UFC pay-per-view for sure. I'll try to get another one out in between. If I do have time, I will. Otherwise, thank you for joining me. Good luck on your bets. Please leave a comment below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my picks and what you think. Love the conversation. I always respond. And uh, yeah, let's see. We'll do a recap next week and hopefully we nail this thing. All right. Good luck, everybody. We'll see you next week.